Bread makes beer, food waste is toast. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. Good News Next Week, of course, is the spinoff from New World Next Week that gives you some of the positive news about the ways that we are winning. We've got the toast of the town story coming up, but first, here's how much people are making from the sharing economy. This story submitted to us by our good buddy James at Corporate Report, and it comes via the Telegraph. Working for sharing economy companies can boost income by up to 15%. This according to an expansive analysis of earnings by the fine folks at J.P. Morgan. Americans who make money from performing tasks on labor platforms such as Uber and TaskRabbit earn an average of $533 extra each month. Participants who rent assets on capital platforms such as home rental site Airbnb and even eBay can make an additional $314 every month on average. The sharing economy, also known as on-demand, the gig economy, or collaborative consumption, refers to the technology companies that allow people to rent out their unused assets or skills. J.P. Morgan tracked anonymized current accounts of 260,000 people who earned money on at least one of 30 gig economy platforms between October 2012 and September 2015. The bank estimates that during that period, 10.3 million people, more than the population of New York City, or 4.2% of American adults, made money from the sharing economy. And actually, 60% of them are out here on the best coast. Over the three years, that number actually increased 47-fold. In any given month, 2.5 million people, or 1% of adults in America, earned money from the sharing economy, which could account for as much as 30% of your total income. Now, this article comes from The Telegraph, and it goes on to basically talk about this study is only in America, but they compare some of their numbers in the UK. And yes, absolutely, people are ruthlessly using things like Airbnb to toss people out and jack up rent and make a hell of a lot of money. It's happening right here in Portland, Oregon. Yes, awful things happen with Uber, but I think these mainstream articles are mentioning mainstream companies because readers are going to mainstreamly recognize those kinds of things. But you know what else counts as part of the sharing economy? independent, non-commercial alternative media that we can bring you as a service. And if you find it valuable, you can go to MediaMonarchy.com support and become a subscriber and support our work. We've also got the report from the stateside version. It's kind of interesting from the Wall Street Journal. Gig economy attracts many workers, few full-time jobs. The U.S. article actually has a much more dour take on it, basically saying, well, make sure you don't quit your day job at big multi-conglomerate America. We'll also include links to the full entire report from J.P. Morgan. It's a PDF called Paychecks, Paydays, and the Online Platform Econ Economy. Our cover story this week comes from our buddy Jared, who not only simulcasts all of my live broadcasts via RadioConfluence.com and the TuneIn app, but he also submits Good News Next Week stories like this one. London Brewery turns bread into beer to tackle food waste. And this does come, like I said, via at Rad Confluence and CBS News. Inside a craft brewery in East London's Hackney, good old-fashioned beer is being paired up with another classic ingredient— Beer has always been described as liquid bread. Bread is made out of grains and yeast and baked. Beer is made out of grains and yeast and is liquid, said John Swain, a skilled beer maker. In the hands of Swain and his partner Tristram Stewart, unused bread is getting a second chance at life. Each bottle of the beer, toast ale, very clever, contains one heel of bread, the last slice of the loaf that no one ever wants. London sandwich makers tossed tons of fresh heels away, which got Stewart thinking. They were throwing away 13,000 slices every single day of operation the way we're doing it. That's 13,000 bottles of beer that could come out of a factory every single day. Tristram Stewart is a global food waste activist. He's got a group called Feedback, drawing attention to the problem. And he says they've gotten interest from Peru, Switzerland, the Czech Republic, up and down the UK and Iceland. He basically says it's an idea that works in so many cultures. You need one that eats bread and drinks beer, and that's pretty much everywhere. 
We actually talked about Tristram Stewart on a recent episode of our new Morning Monarchy show, which is simulcast by Radio Confluence. It was the February 17th episode, and there's a story in there we cover called How Ugly Fruits and Vegetables Can Help Solve World Hunger. And Tristram Stewart actually goes around to restaurants and places, produce departments and others, and gets food that's not bashed up or moldy, it just is ugly and doesn't look good, or maybe has three pieces to it instead of a normal two. All those ugly things that don't look good on commercial shelves, you can grab all of that stuff and again, turn it into a meal. You can get that episode of The Morning Monarchy from February 17th and everything else we do here at MediaMonarchy.com slash feed. Our third and final story this week on Good News Next Week has Ireland's most hated bankster heading home to face charges. This story submitted to us via our buddy Eric at Vulgarian Scroll and originally coming from the Daily Beast. It notes that in the summer of 2008, as financial contagion swept around the globe, a small bank in Ireland, the Anglo-Irish Bank, which had made its fortune advancing spectacular loans to developers, buckled. It got nationalized. The Irish government bought $34 billion worth of Anglo loans for $13 billion at a loss of €20 billion. Euros. So shortly after that event, in 2009, the bank's former chief executive, David Drum, left town. He and his wife and the two kids moved to here in America, where they divided their time between a $3 million home in Cape Cod and another residence in the Boston suburb of Wellesley. So they run away to New England and Massachusetts. As millions back in Ireland lost their jobs, houses, and life savings in the years that followed, Drum became a major sort of focus of their angle and a symbol of both the immorality and untouchability of Irish banksters. But now... Ireland officially applied to extradite Drum, and he was arrested last October, and since then he's been sitting in prison in Boston. It now seems like five months in the U.S. prison system has convinced Drum of what appeals to his better nature could not, that it's time to return home and to face the music. Drum last week dramatically dropped his fight against extradition from the U.S. and agreed to return to Ireland where he is accused of various crimes. In an affidavit filed in the court, Drum said he would continue to contest the charges in Irish courts, and he could be on his way there very, very soon before this February 2016 is even over. Yikes. And that should kind of tell you something about the run for profit prison industry here in the States. You don't want to go there. Some of the other good news next week headlines we are looking at. The Greek attempt to force the use of electronic money instead of physical cash fails. And that comes again from our good buddy James Corbett, who is doing a lot of work recently on the death of cash. And the other story, for the first time ever, cannabis oil will be used legally in a hospital to hopefully save a two-month-old baby girl who couldn't get the treatment in New Mexico. So they went to Colorado, who of course, much like Oregon and Washington, have legalized it. Submit your good news story using hashtag good news next week, or you can just email james at mediamonarchy.com. This is independent, non-commercial, alternative media like I noted, and I can only do it with your support. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a subscriber. We got PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, a P.O. box, any number of ways you can help support our work. Leave your comments down below, and we appreciate you watching. This has been another Positive Good News Next Week episode. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com, reminding you, as always, like Jello Biafra said, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. Media.